Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, I'm joined by Wojciech Wasilewski. I was I, I was hoping I wasn't going to look at my notes, but I wanted to get it right. It's more important to get it right than get the notes, than, than to not look at the notes. And to those of you out there, if you're, if you're watching, if you're listening, I appreciate you being here. We're going to have a good conversation here today. And you get to hang around and you can watch it or listen it, depending on what you've got going on. And if you're new to what we do, head to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Check out all the episodes we've done. We're, we're closing in on a thousand episodes. We're getting closer every day. It's kind of crazy. And you can check all of them out. Transcripts, links, photos, videos, all of them there at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. And if you want to support us, the best thing to do is join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. All right. Thanks for being here. Intro done. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here today. Yeah, you it's great to, share a great bit to have of my you story. here. You know, your your name is familiar to me. You you've been you've been paying attention to the stuff we've been doing for a while. Uh, not that much, be honest. Uh, no, I've I've seen your name in comments a couple of times. I, yeah, I show up at some different events. Uh, we pass each other probably a couple of times. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm the person that I would rather hide somewhere in the corner than go and show everybody who I am. <laughs> I can relate to that. You might not believe it, but I, I can relate to that. What, what is it about hiding that makes you comfortable? Uh, one of the beliefs that I have in my life is the fact that I would like to listen. I would like to watch. I would like to observe. And that is my form of learning. So mm -hmm. uh, instead of just jumping between conclusion, um, you know, between the words in the sentence, I would rather stay somewhere and listen and learn. Uh, and what you observe, that's the big part of my life lately on the mm -hmm. basis of that. Uh, that's how I'm getting my knowledge. Uh, it suits me that way better um, than basically show my opinion on uh, or um, my philosophy. So uh, I would rather gain the knowledge first and then try to rethink and present my opinion. Hmm. I can relate to that. I also like watching, observing, and I think as martial artists, it's so valuable. I think one of the best things martial artists can do is to go sit in public, go sit in a coffee shop and just watch people. Watch how they interact. Watch the distance that most people are comfortable with standing in line. Watch how someone feels and acts if someone stands a little closer than they're comfortable behind them. Right? It, it, all these little details, I think, are so valuable to everyone, but especially to us with what we do. And if we can better understand people by watching them, by listening to them, we can be better at all the other things that we do as martial artists. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, just uh, by simple thing, which I believe simplicity is part of our life as well, uh, watching, observing, learning, gaining the knowledge, and uh, understanding if there is something that we can basically adopt, small, tiny thing in our life, that's going to make purpose, big purpose of what we can offer, what we can offer as a martial artist, what we can offer also as a humans. Um, yeah. So that is very intriguing part. Have you always been an observer? Has that always been your way? Uh, most of my life, I would say, um, I like to be a quiet person, if I can use mm -hmm. that kind of phrase uh, or explanation. I would like to stay on the side. Uh, however, last couple of years, a uh, couple of things changed in my life. I own my own school, karate school, mm -hmm. and that basically, uh, at some point, almost pushed me to the point that I have to stand, stand in the front. I have to be that person who is leading. I need to be that person who uh, is going to. It's, it's hard to lead a class if you're hiding in the corner. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the things are changing automatically when you are in a spot that you know, group of people, students, adults, they're watching you and they're interested in what you would like to share with them. So there's new way of experience that uh, I'm trying to learn and uh, learning every day, even right now, having an interview with you. 
uh, doing that first time in my life. That's another new experience in my life. And um, it's always that first time. It's hard, it's difficult. And uh, our emotion going through the mind and body, I am ready, I'm not ready, what I'm gonna do, what was bad, what was wrong. But after all, I believe after that first um, uh, expression, that first experience, next one is easier because then you can look back a little bit and you can think, okay, that was my first statement, that was my first opinion. And then after that, okay, I would like to learn. I would like to make something different. I would like to make sure that that connection uh, became much easier uh, to grab it. Sure. A lot of people that, that I'm not necessarily going to call you shy, but you're at least adjacent to that, the way you're talking about <laughs> yourself and you know being in the corner. There are a lot of martial artists who never want to open their own school because they're more comfortable in the background. What was it for you that made you take that step? There was a couple of different things happen. Uh, let's say in the last five years of my life, um, <clears throat> one of the main uh, decision was the fact that uh, when I started my uh, karate, my first classes, early 80s in uh, Poland, uh, I never thought that uh, I'd be became teacher, martial art, karate teacher, whatever uh, you would like to call this thing. I never see myself staying in the front of people, staying in the front of students and share knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, that time when I started, there was two main factors for me to do with karate. One of, us, one of these things was the form of self-defense. The other form was of confidence, things that we started our interview. And uh, what happened five years ago, um, COVID came in and uh, I've been practicing for almost four decades in my life mm -hmm. and never thought seriously about to be the person to open martial arts school. Never thought that I'd be teacher, uh, never thought that someone's going to call me sensei. Uh, what happened was the COVID came in and uh, there was a lot of different tragic things happened tragic but different definition, different situation, and uh, happened some change in my life. <clears throat> then uh, the fact that I was not able to continue training with some of the school that I used to be affiliated before, I started to think uh, what I'm going to do with that luggage of 30 plus 40 years of my life. Hmm. So there was the question that I had to answer by myself. Nobody did it. I mean, I, I talk with my family, I ask the questions, what they think, I uh, check a little bit of guidance, I talk with some very close friends of mine, uh, some of the ex-students, and um, I thought and I thought and I said, well, there's four years of your life, and uh, what are you going to do that? You can just put it on the side and almost imagine that never happened, or you can take it for another level, another step another part of your life journey uh, and uh, the other thing that has happened very short a couple of years ago ago my mom she passed away and I flew to Poland uh, and uh, at the funeral I sit at the uh, city where I was born walking through the streets when I grew up over there thinking about everything that happened in my life and then uh, <clears throat> I talk about thinking about her my father uh, which he passed away much earlier, and I said, I cannot just give up my martial art life right now because of what they gave it to me. So my parents, there, there was, uh, these are the humans that they gave me guidance in their life. They gave me the value, they taught me about respect, about uh, confidence, about integrity. Uh, they proved me many times in my life that uh, no matter what happens, uh, if you really believe for your uh, goals, if you really believe for achieving the things, uh, they always gave me that guidance. Never give up, give up on yourself, no matter what, no matter how. And uh, one of the things that I would like to share also, we grew up uh, in that time in Poland under um, communist system. Communist system, that means uh, basically our country was basically occupied by uh, Soviet Union. And the way how we grew was very difficult. It was very harsh on us. Uh, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of certain uncertain things to the days. Uh, like, for example, simple thing, food. 
Uh, there wasn't food enough. Uh, there wasn't any form of uh, leisure life, like you know, going to the movies, uh, watching TVs, uh, having cell phone, having computer. None of these things exist at that time. So my life was a little bit different than majority of people. I would say, comparing with the United States, the life that I see right mm -hmm. now. And uh, every time when I'm looking back, when I'm thinking about how I grew, how they gave me that guidance, how they gave me that insurance almost that my life is valuable. Uh, when I uh, was there a couple of years back, I decided to pay tribute for them, to take that extra step and uh, everything what I'm gonna do in my life, uh, especially with a uh, decision, very important decision in my life. Because I can go to any other jobs, I can do many different things, but I decided to keep going that uh, guidance in martial art, uh, that I, because I appreciated what they gave it to me. And the moment I believe what kind of pushed me to that decision also was the fact if I would not make that decision to continue what I've done and what they gave it to me, that would be a huge waste. So these are a couple of small details of uh, things that they helped me basically to make that decision. And it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, like you mentioned, it's very harsh, it's very difficult, especially for someone who is uh, rather be observer. A watcher, the person who's going to lead the group, the person uh, who's going to have uh, clients that they're going to put the trust, and on and on and on. So uh, the moment I made that decision, it took me uh, almost six months to develop everything, to find the purpose, to find the exact philosophy, to find the curriculum, to find so many different things that basically they are surrounding the, the school. And uh, everything what's happening right now in my school, my dojo, uh, it's built on me, basically. So uh, everything what I'm providing for my clients, my students, it's on my knowledge. And as I said before, each day bring me different opportunity to learn. I'm learning right now, probably I will learn another couple of different things every day. I'm trying to put this to the package. I would like to use that form of package and share with everybody. So. Mm. We just started. Uh, we're going to celebrate big anniversary this year, two years on the market. Congratulations. Thank you. We're very happy. Um, I'm very happy. And obviously, as you know, there's a lot of different challenges. There's a lot of different things that you have to be ready to answer, follow up, and on and on. Uh, however, the moment that I decided two years ago about opening my school, I believe that was the best decision so far in my life. Mm. That's a big statement. It is. And again, uh, the other thing is, yes, the truth is we're getting older and <laughs> we're not getting younger. And uh, what was happened also was the fact that, uh, you know, being alive for plus 50 years, there are certain things that I, I basically thought to myself, I have to change my process of thinking. I have to change a little bit. And uh, that shyness, that, you know, way of observation, I have to switch to the point that I have to be in a spot and uh, I have to be that person that someone's going to rely on my opinion, someone's going to rely on my expertise or a simple thing, you know, just asking the question, do you know anyone? For example, I need to work, I lost the work, do you know any connection? So these are the things that I'm preparing myself every day. So that's how it starts. Yeah. Let, let's go back. You talked about how important it was to... I'm going to use the word respect the gifts that you were given from your training when you were younger and growing up and everything. But how did you, how did you get into training? You said, you know, communist Poland, there, there wasn't a lot going on and you're not the first person to come on this show and talk about how little there was in communist countries in the eighties. Was so when I think of that, that time and that place, the, the fact that there was martial arts just seems magical that, that it existed there and that you could do it. It was. It was. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I was uh, uh, born in a city, very old city, one of the oldest cities in, in Europe uh, with tons of history. And uh, that time, we're talking early 80s, uh, one of these big events also what happens in Poland, uh, I would like to just share with uh, listeners, in 1981, 
uh, unfortunately, we have martial law. So uh, from me being in the uh, age of, let's say, 10 years old, uh, seeing the army on the street uh, with guns, tanks, all these things happen, uh, you know, special uh, form of security police, uh, basically taking people from the line, uh, from the houses. Uh, that was kind of a crucial uh, moment in my life. And uh, I will never forget this moment because that also create uh, the form of characters, uh, characters that we grow something that uh, we learn, we learn how to read the sentence and what is the, between the lines. So that time in Europe, uh, we never thought that something like that exists, first of all. Uh, the biggest impact also what happens in the 80s uh, was the fact that, um, I believe it was 1982 or 1983, we have a chance to see first time in Poland, uh, the famous movie Enter the Dragon, Wilkosli. So we already, uh, the, looking in the, in the time, um, uh, Sherry, 10 years later, when uh, premiere was done and Hollywood around the world, that movie was already existed like a, one of the most important things in the industry. And uh, the movie came to Poland, and the way how they showed, uh, again, because we grew under that system, and uh, the government was very careful what they present to the public, obviously with many different reasons. Uh, I don't want to go to the details. Sure. We get opportunity to watch the movies, and uh, it was like a, I would say like a 50, 60 percent of the population was like a wow, mm. what happened? Who is that gentleman? Where is that coming from? And it was like a kind of sense of finding the the knowledge, finding the details. Who was Bruce Lee? Why this movie is so popular? And uh, that time, obviously, we didn't have any access for you know these all beautiful things like today. Just Google. Boom, done. We have to go on our own research. So that was done by uh, either by libraries, most of the time, or someone who did some form of martial art. And it uh, happened very shortly after that, uh, <clears throat> we just get notified in town that uh, karate school is opening. And uh, that's kind of, uh, I'm not using the word uh, fun, I think happened in terms of timing wise, because everything has purpose. and. Uh, Yes, we started training. I remember the first training that I did it. It was local uh, elementary gymnasium. There was 300 plus students on the floor. And we've been on the last line, the shortest kids in the, in the studio. Uh, and we were just watching from distance. That was amazing. Uh, seeing all this group of people, they tried to learn something. And uh, even the most important thing was to find out after two, three months, how that group of 300 people get less and less and less and question raised what happened because the moment when i started i felt some kind of special connection with either with uh, the form of that art or form with connection with my sensei and uh, i never thought when i started that uh, as i said i be the teacher what fascinated me was the fact of details I never, because of my body, I was bullied in the school. Uh, I never thought about myself competing in big tournaments. I never get that kind of sense of uh, idea putting me in that picture. I was more fascinating about details of techniques. I was more fascinating about that form of meditation. I was more fascinating about how I can take that training outside in my private life, or public life, and I, how I can control some of these, uh, you know, uh, things that other people they are not able. Of. So there was a little bit different form of fascination, and that fascination basically kept me going and growing for years, and uh, that's where we are right now. You you said something sort of quickly because of your body you were bullied in school. Yes. Did I hear that correctly? Mm -hmm. what, what what were you? So obviously, we have that problem growing around uh, for decades, uh, for centuries. Uh, I deeply believe it didn't happen yesterday. Uh, it's continue and it's going to continue. I believe it's part of human uh, characters. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I was an easy target because I was a small person uh, mm. and uh, I was big time bully. And uh, the experience that I had wasn't the pleasant, obviously. Uh, so. Uh, at some point, when you're getting bullied and you have that feelings that 
someone is taking and abusing you because you're looking a little bit skinnier or smaller, uh, it really wasn't that factor of happiness in my life. Mm. So uh, that was another of that reason that uh, I decided to go and train. And uh, train, that means learn self-defense techniques, learn something that uh, with my body, small body, I be able to do something that either is going to show that person who is attacking me, uh, stop, listen what you're doing. You know, uh, you don't have to hurt that person. Uh, you don't have to beat them up. You don't have to prove that you're stronger, you're better, because that other person is weaker than you. So there was a lot of different, that type of uh, elements also get me to that direction that uh, I need to do something. I need to do something to prove myself of, uh, at that very young age in my life, of value that I have, that value also that my parents did pass on. Did, did your experience with bullying change once you started training? It did. It did. Um, there, there was a couple of different uh, factors of that. Uh, one of the things was uh, the city that uh, I grew, uh, we have about roughly about 25,000 um, residents that time. Considered a small city, but uh, the moment that the school was open, the dojo was open in the city. Everybody who was um, a member of that organization, that was like a big statement for the uh, for rest of the city because uh, they knew that we put in effort, we're training hard. And my sensei, uh, he was uh, that type of person that uh, he never was satisfied with 100% effort. And that's one of the things that I learned there. And uh, you have to put more than 100% of your effort. And then there's question, where's the limitation? If there is limitation, but he proved me that hard training that I did it with him for all these years, it helped me to stand up for myself. And that was a big statement uh, to understanding that even with my ability, with my uh, small body, I'd be able to protect myself. Not only that, uh, the moment that you're gaining more and learning more, you more understanding that you'll be able to protect uh, close friends families, uh, things like that. And uh, it goes more and more in uh, age, when you're gaining the age, the more experience. But that was another factor of uh, being bullied, starting uh, karate in that very young age. Were your parents always happy that you were training? Were they, were they worried at first or were they excited? No, they, I don't think so. They were... Uh, Worries. They knew it that, uh, let's put it a simple way, I'm in a good hands. <laughs> so my first sensei, Andrzej Orwalski, he was the known in the town as a really good instructor. And uh, a matter of fact, we've been uh, neighbors for years. Uh, and uh, the moment that they learned that I'm going and he's going to take kind of care of myself, uh, they never worries. Uh, they never have like uh, extra questions, what you're doing, how you're doing. Uh, they knew it, the path that I picked, uh, it's going to help me overall in life. And they knew it that the skills that I'm learning also, I'm not going to use against anyone. Mm -hmm. But the other words, I'm not going to be capable. And I believe that was kind of statement that they look for it, they received that statement. And uh, that, was, uh, that was easier for me as well. And it was easier for them. They knew it, I'm doing something certain that I have a little bit of passion, a little bit of... Uh, interest with it and as long as I'm not doing different things on the side like you know some of the uh, my neighbors some of the kids in my age they, they keep themselves very happy so staying out of the trouble that's happiness yeah okay and I think I heard you say first instructor first instructor means there was a second instructor uh, there was a couple of them uh, yeah. actually going through the life, uh, some of the mentors, good friends. But you always come back to that first instructor because I believe that person is making that impact on you. Um, I, as I said, I never expected myself to be future reference as a teacher, as a sensei, as a person who can share the knowledge. Uh, but always looking back, to that first training when I did it. Always uh, get that memories of what he said, it, how we trained, uh, how we became closer friends, what he saw in me, what kind of value. And uh, 
the knowledge that he passed in that first um, pace of my training will always stay with me. So uh, mm -hmm. no matter how many instructors there are in a way, I believe the first instructor is always special. Special to the point that you're going to treat him as a, as a family, good friend, uh, the person that you can rely on it, and uh, the person who gave you that little bit of spark what you're doing right now because everything is going back all the way that you know 34 years back and everything what I'm doing right now I always see picture with him and uh, obviously I'm not able to pass all the same thing what he gave it to me but the value that he put in my knowledge and my uh, learning it's gonna be always a big part of him sure how close is what you teach in your school now to what you learned from him I would say 50% what I learned, uh, only 50% because, <clears throat> I'm sorry, because there's a lot of big change and change in the civilization. Uh, the biggest change that I see when we passed millennium, uh, I started watching and observe uh, the way how humans they react and find out very interesting um, pattern. Uh, we started chase time. We started chase the time. We started to get more value of being attached to electronicity, mm. to the phones, to the computer. We started to put on the side a little bit of value of um, bond, being bond in the families, taking care about kids, taking care about ourselves as parents, adults. Um, and obviously, with this, all the small, tiny things, uh, it's difficult to teach the way how I learn because I have to recognize the fact that the ability of uh, youngster generation, we're talking about uh, someone who was born 10, uh, 15 years ago, it's totally different. The body is different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to be honest, uh, the way how I see it's a big lack of um, movements. Um, that is the big challenge also coming to, point, uh, to the point that you have to, as an instructor, give them something special that they will get like a little bit of that impact or instinct and they will follow you. So my training was really uh, on the base of discipline and repetition. Uh, I've been sharing with my students lately about uh, being, uh, you know, uh, three, four days per week in a training. Then my sensei told me, he said, oh, let's... Let's go outside, let's do a couple of K's uh, as a you know, warm-up for running. Uh, Sunday, let's play soccer. It was on and on every time. And uh, we never refused it. We always did it. Uh, and obviously, if I would try to get to that point, to time, even time-wise, doing like an hour and a half training, which he still does it in the Poland, uh, there won't be any students. Hmm. Because they would say, uh, it's too much. So if there's class, for example, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, that's the max what they can uh, push towards to that training. So the difference, as I mentioned before, it's definitely it's in a base of body uh, movements and the mindset. Hmm. So uh, when I mentioned the fact about training with discipline, everybody who is listening, what discipline? Oh, no, we don't want to do a discipline. Because it's so hard, it's so painful. Discipline is hard. It is, it is, but also uh, helps you in many, many ways in, la in the life. And uh, the repetition is another thing. Uh, I'm trying to uh, do it less of discipline, less of discipline and uh, repetition. However, these things, they need to be applied. Because if we're looking back for how the martial art is built, it's simple, built on the form of uh, army uh, structure. Uh, mm -hmm. This is one of the things that I believe. So discipline is it's a big part of it. Uh, repetition is a big part of it. And uh, now the biggest challenge that I have, the way how I learn and the way how I will present that skills and knowledge, I have to balance. I have to find healthy balance. And it's difficult. It's difficult. Sometimes I'm thinking I'm overdo the thing. Uh, sometimes I'm thinking there I can do a little bit more. So my process of doing um, training with students, passing the information, it's constantly learning about that balance, how to find that balance, what's going to be good for this particular age of group, uh, what's going to be for that one, 
how far I can push, how far I can challenge. So it's like a, every day I'm finding this um, either during the class or shortly after the warm up is done on the base of energy that I see from the students. So I have to make that adjustment. I have to make that decision. And I know uh, I'm 100% sure that it's not going to be happening. The way how I train at my young age, I won't be able to do the same type of training. However, uh, the moment that my students, they understanding more of my intention and goal that I have for all of them, because I have individual goal for all of them, mm -hmm. uh, the moment that they're going to understand, they more leaning towards to give me that little bit of that extra freedom that I can push and that's make my job easier. So yeah. that's the difference how I change and the difference how I have to find that balance on the floor right now. To people who haven't run a school, it can be so difficult to understand what we do as instructors, to find those goals for people, to challenge them, to help them trust us, to push them towards something that they don't understand because they've never done it. Right. And, and it, it requires such a, a strong relationship. And it's something that I talk to my students about. You know, I, I, I want you to get here. I know you've never been there. I've been there. I believe you can get there. I'm going to challenge you to get there, but you've got to trust that I'm going to push you through some things that you might not want to do. It's difficult. Uh, and I believe the other very important thing that I'm learning and I'm finding is how to first became, instead of became a uh, instructor of karate instructor how to become that humans that have that first connection with person walking to the school mm -hmm. so my uh, philosophy also changed in uh, base what i've been seeing i would like to present myself as a humble person when someone is walking and uh, basically my explanation is very simple i was there too so if i have particular students who is coming and let's say i would like to lose weight so uh my conversation is like very simple. I understand your intention and then I'm trying to find out more details. And the moment that the person is start uh, sharing with me more and more, obviously I'm learning more about that uh, goals. I'm trying to present what I can offer. I'm not trying to, the other words, grab by hand that person and say, yes, you're in the right spot. That's the best thing that happens in your life. I want you to stay with me. I want you to sign contract. I want you to be forever with me. I would rather give them opportunity to think what I can offer and then make the right decision. The other words, I don't want to chase person and force them to do it. I think I'll be rather be more happier to have that kind of balance between me and them and uh, understanding more of the intention. So there's a lot of different things uh, when they come in and uh, with expectation. And it's a lot of different things from my side that I have to learn. And I have to make sure that, yes, they're on the right spot. Uh, and uh, the things that they're thinking about me as a human, and eventually after that as an instructor, that's going to bring them to that goals that they're looking for. You mentioned when I, when I asked that half of what you teach came from your first instructor. Where did the other half come from? Uh, and the base of other trainings, uh, other um, forms of gaining the knowledge. Uh, and again, when we're talking about martial art, uh, not necessarily about karate, uh, like a big, big uh, industry going around the world with different systems. As I mentioned before, I was fascinated with art when I started, with details. So um, at some point I decided to Besides the karate that I learned, and I learned my first karate was Kyokushinkai. It was a very demanding system, uh, really uh, hard and harsh, and I can go on and on. Seems I very got... appropriate for a communist country in the yes. 80s, Kyokushin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a time in my life, after learn uh, and get good skills and knowledge of it, I was more interested in what else I can learn. Mm. And then I started to find the knowledge, uh, either by uh, books, either by different type of symposium, different type of events, different type of um, friendship 
that helps me a little bit to open my mind, my process of thinking. Uh, it's building every day. And uh, one of the things that I'm constantly uh, repeating to my students, I'm only one white belt. It doesn't matter how many years is my experience because uh, once when you have passion and uh, you really believe and you have these things in your heart, there is no way that you're going to stop until you have like a bad injuries that is not going to help you to continue or your bad limitation, uh, many of these things. But uh, getting knowledge uh, just keep me motivating every day. So uh, again, we're gaining older uh, and uh, every day is a great opportunity. One of the things that I'm uh, sharing with my students, uh, <clears throat> it's opportunity. We as our humans, we have great opportunity to learn. Learn on our mistakes, learn on our success, get that knowledge, uh, and in the first place, use that knowledge in our personal life, and the moment that we understand it's working, then I can share with, uh, with other uh, people that they need it or asking for help. So that is the, the thing that is keep moving me and motivating me every day, get that sense of connection. Uh, learn from different persons, attend the different events. And um, one of the other things that I'm learning lately as well, um, you, I'm meeting people. I'm meeting different people, different style, martial arts style. Um, <clears throat> but the moment that we have a little bit of conversation and then our philosophy, what we're doing, what we decided to do is kind of connect, that proved me that I'm doing the right thing because I'm not alone and uh, there's majority of us that we have that passion with love and uh, we believe with our mission, I'm calling this as well mission in life because uh, that's what we decided to do it. So uh, getting that knowledge every day, it's, it's basically give me the energy, give me the sense of what I'm doing, what I'm going to do in the future and how I'm going to live my heritage. When did you leave Poland? Uh, that was 1996. Uh, we moved. And did you come? Did you come to the U.S.? Yes, we came to U.S. Okay. Uh, that time, uh, I came first to the United States. Then my uh, girlfriend came after me. We stayed a couple of years. Uh, our first son was born over here, and uh, we decided to stay. Uh, mm -hmm. The funny story about the United States uh, was the fact that <laughs> I was a young kid and, uh, as I said, uh, we didn't have that much sense of connection outside of the Poland. I mean, even traveling that time outside of the Poland, you had to have passport. The passport was kept in special security offices. So, physically, you didn't have passport. Oh, oh. yes. So, okay. every time when you try to travel outside of the country, you have to go to the, the special office in the town You needed to ask permission. Yes, get the permission. And on the base where you go, if you go to the West, uh, there wasn't that, you know, uh, a lot of uh, agree, yes, you can go. There was more like uh, going to the part when the rest of the East Europe was occupied but by the uh, Soviet Union. So what was happened, uh, it's, it, was it was really difficult. It was really difficult to get that sense of what outside. And uh, talking about United States, I watch movies. We have uh, probably that was Saturday evening. There was some of the westerns, not that much, obviously, of showing us that there is existing different world with different culture. And why the United States? Uh, I remember I watched a movie that was Marilyn Monroe, Jane Wayne, I believe, uh, one of these old movies. And uh, the next Saturday there was another movie, and I looked for that live, and I said, "Wow, that is fascinating." It was really something interesting, uh, either the way how life was presented in the movies or the way how the country looked, you know, that beautiful natural, natural connection, surroundings, rivers, uh, waterfalls, mountains, something was fascinated. And uh, at some point I decided my life, well, one day I'm going to live in the United States. I'm going to be resident, so I'm going to be citizen of that country. And that was like a kind of dreams in the clouds that time, because all of these things that I mentioned before, not to having passport in your hands, uh, talking about, you know, expenses, you know, uh, the price for the tickets, all this connection, all this process going through. But I put that goal somewhere in that clouds, and time goes by in my life, and uh, uh, 
at the early 20s, uh, I was lucky to become uh, you know, residents of the country. And that's how I end up here. <laughs> and where in the U.S. are you now? Uh, we're in the Connecticut right now, uh, living okay. in uh, Valley area close to New Haven. Uh, we're in Hale. And not too far? No, not Just too far. Just a few hours away? Yes, beautiful state. Uh, we're very happy, uh, very nice, clean. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of that um, part of country when I left, when I lived before in Poland, so uh, I'm kind of happy living over here. Good, good. What about your training? You know, I, I here, here's why I'm asking this question. I've traveled, I've never lived in another country, but I imagine that when you go elsewhere, even if you're training martial arts, the way martial arts is trained is different because the culture of the country you're in is different. The people teaching it are different. And I could imagine that it might be difficult to find people that train the way you want to train. Now, if you just opened a school, I, di I didn't hear you say you stopped training. So you came over here and you found a way to keep training. What 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 was that like? So uh, one of the things when I train in Poland, something basically get me to the point that I would like to keep my training because I saw the positive benefits of that typical training. So my body felt uh, healthier. My uh, mindset was clearer. And uh, when I moved to the United States, after all these years of training, being active, doing something almost every day, uh, there was a big wall of change that I have to uh, do it in my life. Hmm. So first of all, you mentioned the culture. Uh, and I'm still, more two decades, I'm still learning the culture. I'm still learning the things. So that, am I, because it keeps yes. changing. So, <laughs> you can understand how uh, hard and difficult it is for me to come from different country uh, with yeah. different values and growing up to a different system to get that in sense that how I can feel to be part of that culture. So culture is still process of learning. A language obviously is still process of learning. Uh, the history is process of learning. Uh, so there was like a big, big wall. Uh, um, let's use it, that kind of expression. And uh, one of the things that I decided to find or continue not to losing the sense of all these years when I train in Poland, what I can do to myself and how I can find something similar what I train over there to keep me moving basically. So it took me years, obviously, uh, because the way how I train over there, uh, because of the way of communication with the owners of schools, because of the way of how they taught, the way how they express themselves. Uh, it was very difficult and took me really a lot of time to find something that gave me that um, purpose of not stopping. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's definitely it's time-wise. Uh, you have to take time, you have to make that kind of decision right and uh, see if that's going to continue that strength, build that strength in you and keep you moving, keep you be able to uh, enjoy it basically. Because the moment when uh, I stopped training in Poland, uh, something was missing in my life. I was like, a, shut the door almost. Mm. And I came over here starting that new life, uh, finding all the different elements in daily life, uh, you know, finding the job, learning the the new things, learning the language, uh, all of, on and on and on every day. Then the doors are shut in Europe because of my training, and then suddenly I decided to not shut these doors. I would like to keep them open. I would like to keep it going. I would like to learn uh, and uh, not put them aside. It was a different time, different difficult time, uh, but I'm happy that I did it. I never, I never decided to, okay, Let's keep on a different profession. Let's uh, learn new things uh, and just, you know, forgetting about everything will happen. Yeah. You talked about 
the what I'm going to call the personal growth aspects of martial arts training. You've brought up discipline as well, and setting goals. How is that impacting your life now? What is going on with your training that keeps you disciplined? Or what are the goals you're setting for yourself? Or what is it about your training outside of self-defense that keeps you motivated? You know, some talk, talk about something in there. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I deeply believe the moment that we're staying in the front of the students, we have to show skills. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have skills to show proper technique, uh, nobody's going to be interesting to walk through the door and say, okay, I would like to become your students. There's something sure. specific that you, I would like to learn. So my motivation has many different levels of uh, keep me going. My daily training is happening almost every day. I'm training a uh, little bit of small scale right now than I used to do because I had five years ago I had an accident. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, one of the things that I have to learn very fast was the fact that uh, my body is not able to do the harsh training or training that I used to do because of some limitation. So uh, it took me a couple months to understand that I won't be able to, let's say, kick high or do the stretching or push myself for physical aspect for, let's say, hour or two hours. <clears throat> so I have to change this thing. I have to adopt. <clears throat> and... Uh, I know I have to keep going training everything what I learn because the moment I'm going to stop, first of all, it's going to affect my personal health. Mm -hmm. And uh, if my health is going to be really in a bad position, I won't be able to present any of the techniques, any of the skills that I have. Uh, not only that, if my health is not of the level that uh, helped me to enjoy my life, that would be uh, the point that I have to start thinking about changing what I'm doing right now, which I don't want to do. It. So the limitation that I have, I have to understand when I, or how I can take that next step. So I didn't decide to stop. I didn't decide to, let's say, oh, I'm not going to do training every day or every second day because of the of the pain that is going to cost me later, which is happening every time when I'm pushing too hard, obviously, mm. my training. So uh, the, the other big motivation is that I'm really enjoying the training by movements. I really enjoying the fact that I can challenge myself without anybody who is noticing the fact that I'm training. My training is only my personal training. When I'm doing my personal training, nobody see my training. And that type of form of training basically put me on a specific uh, zone when it's only me and me and nobody else. Hmm. So the moment I'm struggling with some specific uh, either movements or techniques, there's that moment that we're talking about that consciousness and, and uh, confidence when you're saying, okay, you've done it that for all these decades and I know it's going to be limited right now. What, what you can do, how you would like to proceed the same training that you've done, at, let's say, 20 years ago or 10 years ago. And that is a big challenge, uh, specifically when you're doing one-on-one uh, -on -one training, when you're training yourself. When you see the point that you push over that 100% of, of limitation, uh, it makes you, at some point, motivated to share everything else with your students. So if I see that I'm capable to do that training with all this limitation, and uh, when I'm coming to the school, to my daughter, and I see some students, let's put a very simple explanation, they're lazy. Because all of us, we have ability to do the things. And I see that lady, they became lazy, they're using a lot of excuse, being tired, and this and that. Mm -hmm. Parents, they basically... Uh, quickly approve these things, uh, kind of leaning towards to that um, explanation. Uh, my uh, statement is very simple. And uh, all of my students, they know story about my accidents, my limitations, things that I can do. Uh, I'm just simple statement. I said, if your sensei can do it, 
there is no way for you that you are not able to do it. And I'm doing these things because I deeply believe I can come in and I can present for you. I can prove your life. I can show you that you can better every time when you come in here seeing me training because everything what I'm teaching basically you're capable to do it. So there's many different aspects and form of my motivation for training. And again, one of the things that I mentioned before, because I truly believe that martial art uh, has a lot of beneficial aspects and I'm pretty sure you know all of them. Uh, that's, that is big um, philosophy of me doing this training hard, coming by myself, uh, going outside where it's hot, where it's cold, where it's snow, and pushing to that limit and find out what else you can do with yourself, how can you can prove yourself that you can do more. And these things also rely on my private life. So that is the form of that balance that helps me by that hard training and uh, how I can bring that aspect in my private life, how I can deal with the problems that my family has, like everybody else. Like my students, they come and ask, asking me questions, how we can use this form, how we can share this experience and how that can help. So uh, that is my motivation of that training where I'm doing right now. I love it. For me, the, the reminders that the limits really don't exist are so important in what I do because almost everything that I do, other people said I couldn't do. And if I'd listened to them, yes. you know, if nothing else, I wouldn't be talking to you right now as well as many other things that have happened would not have happened. So yes. I am, I'm glad you brought that up. In a couple minutes, not even in, in a short time, I'm going to throw it back to you to close us up, to, to give some final words to the audience, but to the audience, some powerful stuff here today. And I'm so thankful that you joined us and, and I hope that you'll consider maybe where you draw limits that maybe you shouldn't, maybe where <laughs> you could benefit from some additional discipline. You know, doing hard things brings out the best in us. That's something that's happened far back in humanity as I'm aware of. And remember, if you want to check out everything we've got going on, whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. And, and of course, um, do you have a website, social media? What, what stuff can we share with the audience for you? Well, um, definitely one of the things that we've been talking about uh, during that um, conversation about is how martial artists benefit everything. Mm. Uh, and me today being with you, sharing my life uh, with the audience, uh, sharing the you know, uh, main uh, direction that they changed my life. Uh, it's very important. The learning new experience, just sharing these things, sitting with you. Uh, there's always opportunity. I, uh, one of the things that I am constantly believe, uh, we have opportunity. Don't give up on anything. Don't say I'm not capable. Don't say I don't want to do it. I can't. Don't say these things. Believe. Start believing in yourself. The opportunity is opening that uh, window of uh, space that there is no end, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And all of us will have these things in our hands. Nobody's going to do it for us, definitely. We're the people, we're the persons that we're responsible for our life. No matter what's going to happen, if there is martial art, uh, you would like to become president, you would like to be CEO, uh, manager, on and on. Everything is in our heart. So we need to have beliefs. We need to have really deep beliefs on uh, things that we're capable to do. Uh, so keeping the life simple, uh, one of the things that I would like to share at the end, uh, I will start with the love. Love is a very important thing in a life. Uh, uh, finding the definition of what is that love meaning for us. It's very important. And that love is going to create uh, happiness. The moment that we're happy, the happiness is going to create uh, good health. And uh, I mentioned a couple of times uh, during the conversation that we're getting older. And uh, the moment that we're not having that good health, the purpose of our life kind of just, uh, you know, running like a rain between the fingers. So uh, there's a lot of different things that definitely is worth it to believe. Uh, me being seven years old in Poland, watching a movie from United States, dream about uh, living in a country, uh, 
that's one of those things that I will always keep in my mind. I will always share with uh, anyone who is willing to listen. To me. Set your goals high. Definitely, I would say high, and uh, keep working. Uh, the beauty of reaching the goals also is the fact that you're reaching them in a period of time. Don't think that you're going to reach them over the night. So existing in a life, it's more interesting, it's more beautiful. And uh, that's the beliefs that uh, I would like to share with everyone.